black spot on the surface of the Sun. That leaves us to the last terrestrial planet, Mars. It's smaller than Earth, half the diameter, eighth of the volume, and it's cooler since it's 50% further away from the Sun, and Mars' gravity is 0.4 that of the Earth's. So our 180-pound guy is going to weigh 72 pounds on the surface of Mars. There are some interesting coincidences between Mars and Earth. Its day is 24 and a half hours long instead of our 24, and its inclination is 24 degrees instead of our 23 and a half degrees. So Mars has seasons and days like the Earth, although its year is nearly two Earth years long. So it'll have a sixth month long summer, six month long winter, sixth month long spring and fall. Mars has been extensively photographed by the Mariner, Viking, and Mars Global Surveyor spacecrafts. On a warm day on Mars, the temperature can hit up to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And winds sweep dust and patchy ice crystal clouds through the sky, it's generally clear enough to see its surface from the surface of the Earth. We have sparkling white polar caps contrast the reddish color of most of the rest of the planet. There's a large rift running along the equator stretching a thousand kilometers long, a hundred kilometers wide, and ten kilometers deep. It's called Vallis Marineris. This canyon, named after Mariner, dwarfs the Grand Canyon and would actually span the entire United States. The polar ice caps change in size with seasons, because Mars's tilt is similar to Earth's. So a thin atmosphere creates more severe extremes in the seasons, leading to large ice cap size variations. The southern ice cap is mostly dry ice, frozen carbon dioxide. And its diameter varies from almost 6,000 kilometers in the winter to only 350 kilometers in the summer. The northern cap shrinks to about 1,000 kilometers and has a surface layer of dry ice, but is primarily water ice and has separate layers indicative of climate cycles, including ice ages. The water contained in Mars's caps is far less than that in the Earth's ice caps. The Martian poles are bordered by immense deserts with dunes blown by winds into parallel ridges. At mid-latitudes, there's a huge upland called the Tharsis Bulge. And it's dotted with volcanic peaks, including Olympus Mons, which rises 25 kilometers, or 15 miles, above its surroundings. It makes it three times higher than Mount Everest is on Earth. It's 370 miles wide at the base, and you could drop, drop Manhattan into the crater at its peak. It's believed to have formed as hot material rose from the deep interior and forced the surface upward. And there's hardly any impact craters on it, which says that the age of it has to be no more than 250 million years. It may have created the gigantic Valley Marineris. Olympus Mons is the largest mountain in the solar system. If we were to look at sea level, <clears throat> um, Mount Everest is 5.5 miles above sea level. Olympus Mons is three times higher and much wider than Mount Everest. Now, from the winding terrain of features that often contain islands, it is inferred that water once flowed on Mars. There is no surface liquid pr present currently. However, we see huge lakes and small oceans that thought to have existed, and the evidence from these come from smooth traces that look like old beaches around the edges of craters and basins. It's a picture from one of the surveyors of the morning. We have frost in the morning. This isn't water frost. This is all dry ice or frozen atmosphere on the surface of Mars. Other pictures taken from above show objects like this, which is an ancient lake that dried up over large periods of times. Or things like splash craters. Here we have this crater that formed the large peak in the center but we don't get rays that come out. We get material that's squished out. Looks like someone stomped in mud, and you get the splash zone around it. 
Now, clouds and windblown dust are visible evidence that Mars has an atmosphere. Spectra show the atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide with traces of nitrogen and a little oxygen and water. However, it's a very tenuous atmosphere. The atmospheric density is only about 1% that of the Earth's. So, on the surface of Mars would be similar to our atmosphere at 100,000 feet. The lack of atmospheric density and Mars's distance from the Sun make the planet very cold. Noon temperatures at the equator reach a bit above freezing point of water. Nighttime temperatures get down to 67 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Thus, most water is frozen, locked up either below the surface as permafrost or in the polar caps as solid ice. Clouds are generally made of dry ice and water ice crystals and they're carried by the winds. As on Earth, the winds arise from the warm air that rises at the equator and moves toward the poles and is deflected by the Coriolis effect. Winds are generally gentle but can strengthen and carry a lot of dust. No rain falls despite the clouds. The atmosphere is too cold and dry. We can see fog in the valleys and ground frost has been observed and CO2 snow or dry ice snow falls on the poles during the winter. The dry riverbeds indicated that liquid water flowed in Mars Pass. That means it had to have a denser atmosphere or a higher pressure to prevent the fast vaporization of surface water in the atmosphere. Cratering indicates that this thicker atmosphere disappeared about three billion years ago. There are two ways that lost, Mars lost its thick atmosphere. One could be that Mars was struck by a huge asteroid that blasted the atmosphere into space. Two, that Mars' low gravity coupled with low volcanic activity produced a net loss of gas molecules into space over the first one to two billion years of its existence, decreasing the effectiveness of the greenhouse effect to maintain a warm atmosphere. The Mars interior is differentiated like the Earth's interior into a crust mantle and iron core. It has a mass somewhere between that of dead Mercury and the lively Earth Venus, implies Mars should be an intermediate tectonic activity. Numerous volcanic peaks and uplifted highlands exist. Olympus Mons and other volcanoes do not show any craters on their slopes, indicating they still may occasionally erupt. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. They're about 20 kilometers across, or around 12 miles and are probably captured asteroids. Their small size prevents gravity from pulling them into spherical shapes. They're both cratered, implying bombardment by smaller objects. Now, interest in life on Mars grew enormously with the misinterpretation of observations made by astronomer Giovanni Scarpielli in 1877, who called certain straight-line features on Mars canali, meaning channels. Well, the English-speaking countries interpreted this as canals, and the search for intelligent life on Mars began. Spacecraft photos later revealed the features on Mars were natural land structures. The Viking spacecraft landed on Mars to search for life up close and found no evidence. In 1996, a meteorite was found on Earth that we knew came from Mars, and we could tell that by the um, by the ratio of elements in the meteorite. And certain structures suggested fossilized bacteria in the meteorite. Today, most scientists are still unconvinced that this is not just some sort of crystal formation. So why are the terrestrial planets so different? Why does Mercury have no atmosphere? Venus has sulfuric acid clouds, Earth has nice water clouds, and Mars has hardly anything. What makes them all so different? Some of it's the role of mass and radius. Mass and radius affect interior temperatures. That in turn determines the level of tectonic activity. Low mass, small radius planets will be cooler inside and hence less active than larger planets. This relationship is in fact observed with Mercury, the least active, then Mars, then Venus and Earth. 
Internal activity also affects the planet's atmosphere since volcanic gases are the most likely source of materials. Low mass Mercury and Mars will have a smaller source of gas than Venus and Earth and the low surface gravity of these small planets also means they will have trouble retaining the gases they receive. Mars, Venus, and Earth all probably started with CO2 atmospheres and traces of nitrogen and water, but were then modified by sunlight, tectonic activity, and in the case of Earth, life. Sunlight warms a planet in a manner that depends on the planet's distance from the sun. The closer, the warmer. The amount of warming depends on the amount and makeup of the atmospheric gases present. Solar warming and atmospheric chemistry will also determine the structure of the atmosphere, which may feed back into the amount of warming that occurs. For example, warmer Venus lifts water vapor to great heights in its atmosphere, whereas cooler Earth, water condenses out at lower heights, and the upper atmosphere is almost totally devoid of water. The great difference in water content of the upper atmosphere of Earth and Venus has led to drastic differences between their atmospheres at lower levels. Water at high altitudes in the Venetian atmosphere is lost because of photodissociation. Solar UV light breaks the HO2, H2O when the H, the hydrogen, escapes into space. Venus, as a result, has lost most of its water, whereas Earth, with its water protected at lower altitudes, has not. The water near Earth's surface then makes it possible for many chemical reactions not found on Venus. For example, CO2 is removed from the atmosphere because it dissolves in liquid water. Biological processes also remove the CO2 from the atmosphere. The dissolved CO2 in ocean water is used by sea creatures to make shells, calcium carbonate, and when they die, their shells fall to the bottom of the ocean, forming a sediment. The sediment eventually changes to rock, thus a lot of the carbon dioxide is tied up in rock for very long periods of time. With CO2 so readily removed from the atmosphere, mostly nitrogen is left. Now some CO2 is recycled back as subduction takes some of the things at the bottom of the ocean down and it melts and causes the CO2 to become a gas again and comes out whenever there's a volcanic eruption. Green plants breaking down H2O during photosynthesis is very likely the reason Earth's atmosphere has a high oxygen content. Now, twin rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, landed on the surface of Mars and returned an amazing amount of data. And we have a new larger rover on Mars right now. Rock outcropping at the Opportunity landing site is thought to be material deposited at the bottom of an ancient ocean which is why we landed there to look for signs of life. A close-up image of the rock at the Opportunity Landing Site and provides uh, it's possibly formed from sediment in flowing water. This image from Mars Global Surveyor, a Mars orbiter that ended its mission in 2007, shows this flat-topped mesa on the surface of Mars. And here we have a view from that of a, what appears to be a dried up river delta. Looks sim similar to the Nile as it's coming out. So the Mars Science Laboratory, or Curiosity, is currently on Mars searching for signs of life. I would like you to watch at this point the NASA MER video. It's a very short, maybe a few minute long video um, showing how um, we send, we sent the Mars Explorer off to Mars. I want you to notice all the different things we talked about before on rockets. The multiple um, fuel tanks that after we burn those engines they fall off. and How much of this large rocket actually makes it to Mars is a very small part of it. And especially look to see how we landed. It was a novel landing. They used airbags and just bounced to a stop. And how it drove around and looked. <laughs> 